Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be looking at doing a bit of work on this old pine door. So the, the main focus for today is to lengthen the door so it's not quite tall enough. It's about 80mm too short for the opening that it's got to go in. The bottom rail isn't very tall so traditionally that would have been about a 9 inch bottom rail on there. So we're going to add about 80mm to that bottom rail and splice a bit into the style so it looks a bit more like it's been done properly than just like you traditionally see with a, a bit of a board screw to the bottom of the door. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the door on the bench. I'm just going to offset a splice onto these uprights here. So on one half of the door, I'll, I'll sort of trim it down in the middle like this somewhere. One side, I'll cut it there and the other side will be cut down here and do like a halving joint to add that bit in so it's nice and glued and is fairly strong. And then obviously cut the bottom rail on and glue a piece on in line with the grain here. So all the grain runs in the direction that it actually should run true to the door. So I need to cut this bottom off nice and square with the insides here. Over here looks to be uh, about the lowest point. So I went to 110 mil. I'm just looking for the point at which I'm going to get a nice clean cut all the way across the door. You, go. you can immediately see how much nicer that edge is than what was there. So now I need to mill one side back higher than the other. So as this side's a bit damaged here, I'm going to choose this side to mill back higher and that'll give me my halving joint to have a bit of strength on that repair. So I'm just going to mark up past this waist here but so it doesn't go all the way through the joint. I'm going to go 70 mil both sides from a nice square cut and then draw a line on that, drill across the door. And then from that line I'm just going to put a block of wood that I've mitered at 30 degrees. So it doesn't have to be 30, you could do that square, but the correct way is to, to mitre a splice in so that you've got a bit more surface area on the grain and on an external application the rainwater will come down and won't run into the joint because it's angled like downhill there's a downward slope but I'm gonna put that on the rail there clamp him in place then you can use a multi-tool referencing off this with a brand new blade I like these ones on Amazon I'll put a link in the description if you buy it through the link then I'll earn about 10p but uh, they seem pretty cheap. They're almost disposable, they're that cheap. But you want the ones with the teeth that look like that. So they're sort of almost perfect triangle teeth. You don't want the ones that are bimetal with the angled one side teeth because they tend to burn everything to the right. If you're plunging in like this, one side of the cut will burn and it's not long before that heats the teeth up, gums them all up and then it doesn't cut anymore. So these are the best ones for plunge work. Biometal are great if you've got like a nail or something to cut through then they will actually cut through that but uh, these are the ones you want for a bit need to cut like I say they're fairly reasonably priced and uh, economical to use. If you're not very happy at plunging into a bit of wood accurately you could uh, clamp a block here to stop that from uh, going into this end grain. Now that I've mentioned it I better do it because I'll only go and naff it up if I don't. We're looking to plunge in to about that halfway set in there. Get this out of the way now, we've passed that edge. Then I'm going to use 
uh, not a brand new router cutter, but one that's got a fair bit of heft to it, just to plane that surface down. nice little cross section of a wedge joint there so you can see where the, this is the upper tenon and this is the the bottom tenon so there would have been a haunch room behind this tenon originally that would have wedged that one uphill but you can see how uh, taking too much timber out in between or not leaving enough timber in between your mortises can affect the strength of the joint there um, just by how short this bit of grain is and the pressure you're putting on the two can lead it to snap over time but he's got his wedges about spot on there so you drive this wedge in first until your rail sort of seats and everything is seated nicely you don't want to go too much with that one in that it starts pushing this tenon up and bending it because then that's going to weaken it so you drive that one in first then you drive your top wedge in to lock your joint so that's about spot on because they're they're sort of similar in width and depth in the joint so uh, he's got that about right and then this side look you can see the top wedge that you drive in second here hasn't quite gone in as far as the bottom wedge so not quite perfect on that one but I dare say this door was hand cut you see by the way it's been nibbled out there in the bottom of that haunch that uh, it's been a hand cut tenon so that's fairly good but it's going to do a similar thing on this side turn the door over now uh, measure up so I'm only going to go a little bit just to break that line up so 20 mil because I can do a through cut on this I'm just going to set the track saw rail to the marks, put my 30 degree bevel on the saw, set it to full depth, and then just make sure that I don't cut into this end ring. So there's a little line on the saw that tells you where to start. So now I just need to select a piece of timber to splice in. Got some components from another door that was uh, sacrificed for various door repairs and, and whatnot, but wasn't a particularly brilliant door. So we're harvesting the timber from that door to repair the others. So I'm just gonna try and find a bit of similar grain. I mean, that looks pretty decent and it's one of the shortest bits in the door. So probably the least wastage if I use, if I cut this in half, it should pretty nicely do the two sides of the door. So I'm just going to cut that down on my new cross cut. Right, so just squared this piece up. Just going to see what we got on here. Got 17. So I'm going to take that measurement and house it out of this piece of wood and then cut these two angles on. That will slot in and glue in place. Thirty degrees. Thirty 
So I'll keep working that cut until it seats both sides nicely. La la. <laughs> yeah, Roy. There we go. So we've got a nice seat on the other side. And a nice seat on the top. That's both sides chopped in nicely. Just clamp them in place so they don't fall out. So just quickly measure this inside shoulder width, which is five six. Three. I think the best bit for this is the munting. I'm just going to mark my height on, make sure that is wide enough. So we need uh, two metres. Right, just got to clean this edge up. So, because these grooves are quite deep, I, I want to put a joint between this, this piece and this piece. So I'm going to cut that side off, square, then it's going to leave me with a groove up underneath the door. So I'll glue a piece in there where it's not seen underneath the door, but it doesn't need to be particularly strong. And then this side will be solid timber, so I can put a nice joint in there. Okay, so there's a dry fit without assembly. Looking quite good. That should come down when it's clamped. And everything will clamp up nice there. So, just going to dub a bit of glue on it. So I'm just coating all the end grain. PU glue is great for this type of glue up because it uh, it doesn't soak into the really dry wood and then you're left up with no adhesive. It will soak in, but it also foams at the same time. So there's always an adhesive contact between the two pieces. And that's really important. You'll find weak joints uh, when you, your glue sort of soaks in to the timber before it's gone off. Because uh, PU's gone off in about five minutes, you get nice strong joints because you're not not lost all your adhesive sort of contact between the two pieces. Get that on there. Little squiggle, put some dominoes in it. Clamp that together. Looking good. To be honest, just having that line not running straight through and the, the grain direction the same really just breaks up the joint and the fact you've added a bit on the door. And if anything else, it makes it look better. If you can see a bit of nice workmanship's got into it rather than uh, just slapping a piece of timber on the bottom and it looking like a bit of a bodge. So it uh, should turn out pretty nice. But everything looks pretty in line. It's glued up quite nicely and yeah I'm going to take the dog for a walk while that sets. It's looking pretty pissed off. 
Walkies? You got a walkies? Walkies? <laughs> Come on in, let's go on walkies. It's easiest to clean this PU off when it's dried but still tacky. So that at this point, but it goes really hard when it's fully dry. Looks like a proper bottom rail now. The underside doesn't look too bad either. That uh, other door was obviously slightly thicker, so it's going to want a little bit of planing and sanding down, but yeah, it looks good. Right, so my frame, I need mean, it's a 708 opening, so I want to allow 5mm off of that, so 703, that is the width of this door, so I've got 709mm to get it parallel on both edges, so I'm just going to take about 3mm off of each edge, so 3mm off this side to clean it up, and 3mm off the other, and that should give me two nice really square and clean edges. Then I can square the top up and then cut the door to the height. There we go, that is the door finished. So I've cut that to finished size now, so I shouldn't actually need to take any more off that, because when I make the door lining, it'll be exactly to that internal width and be fitted perfectly parallel and level. So the door gaps should be spot on without having to touch this door again. But that's the repair, it's come out pretty nice. There's a little bit of a nick in the old bit of wood there on the door but looks pretty nice on this side of the door the timber is slightly lighter where I've had to where I've sanded it in because that piece of wood that I used was was thicker than this door so anywhere you cut it it's not got that sort of 
deeper colour. It's probably the door that, that we've sacrificed probably isn't quite as old as the one that I'm repairing. But on the other side you can see it uh, it blends in a little bit better. I mean to the naked eye, I can see on the camera it looks a bit of a contrast but that bottom rail when it stood up and sat on the floor you actually can't really see that joint at all. It looks looks like a quite a good match. And these all wax in quite nice when it's finished so no doubt you'll see in a later video on the channel that I'll uh, pop across and have a look at this once it's been fitted and hung and all finished and waxed up so um, you'll have to keep an eye out for that one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.